Hey everybody, this is uh, Ryan Leach here at the, the National Weather Service in Missoula. Sitting in with me today, um, we have uh, Leanne Allegretto and uh, Dan Zumpf. Um, I'll be presenting. Uh, so right off the bat here, uh, we're going to go ahead and start putting the participants on silent mode in case anybody doesn't have their phone uh, muted. And then after we're done giving our talk, we're going to go ahead and unmute it and open it up for questions. And, uh, and both Dan and Leanne will be here to help me with any questions. So with, uh, with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. The conference is now in silent mode. All right, so what we're, uh, the reason we're having the webinar today is because we've got a couple um, weather events coming up, winter storm, uh, winter storms. It seems that winter decided to show up in January this year. So we've got heavy snow tonight in northwest Montana and central Idaho. Uh, with whiteout conditions possible throughout the Camas Prairie. And then a second round of heavy snow Sunday evening into Monday uh, with the potential for blizzard conditions again in northwest Montana. And then it's going to be significantly colder next week. So we put together this uh, weather threat matrix and basically um, the I guess the more extreme the color, the, the more extreme we expect the relative impacts um, from the weather to be. So again, we've got the, the purple or the extreme impacts expected. Uh, Monday morning basically in northwest Montana, but there's plenty um, there's plenty uh, of impacts elsewhere throughout the region coming up. So this anyway this metrics kind of matrix kind of highlights um, highlights some of the geographic areas and uh, the relative level of impact we're expecting. So um, expecting the worst impacts looks like in northwest Montana and then uh, parts of north central Idaho, but minor relatively minor impacts elsewhere. Relative being the keyword. So we'll start with round one of snow tonight uh, through tomorrow morning. Um, main impacts with this event are going to be up in the mountains. We're looking at over a foot of snow at uh, places like Lookout and Lolo Passes, generally the Clearwater Mountains in central Idaho uh, as well. And even it's interesting, we've got a, a chance for snow in places like Riggins, which I know we don't get snow in very often, and of course Grangeville. And on the right I have White Bird Hill, which for those who aren't aware, this is um, just to the southwest of Grangeville. Uh, in, in central Idaho and this this chart shows basically the timing of when we expect the when we expect the snow so we've really got this what I'm talking about right now is this 3.2 spike and then um, later I'll talk about this this other one the point I'd like to make with this timing graph is that we've got these two more intense periods of snow but that it's basically going to continue snowing throughout the whole period especially in central Idaho so we we've got um, these two events that we're highlighting, but it's going to be snowing in between those two, so it won't be really a clean break. It'll just keep snowing. Um, also, and this is probably the bigger impact, um, we're expecting some pretty strong wind gusts uh, on Saturday night. We're looking at the, the peak winds around midnight, but it's still going to be blowing about 15 to 20 miles per hour through the day. Um, and this is the sort of the, the overnight winds. And that's going to kind of line up with the snowfall so that um, we'll have those winds, some of those strong winds remaining when we have some of that peak snowfall and afterwards with the new snow on the ground. And that's going to cause a, um, a blowing snow hazard. So areas we're concerned about, the most concerned about with that wind is down here, like from Grangeville, White Bird Hill to Fry Hill uh, with those areas. Also a little bit of wind uh, as you go down uh, the White Bird Hill area. And, and there's a potential for some snow at, at maybe elevations we're not used to seeing it at the bottom of um, Whitebird Hill and, and into Riggins. So right where we're looking at in the middle of the night, we're expecting some of the stronger gusts, sort of 20 to 40 miles an hour will be, I think, pretty common in some of the wind prone areas, like that stretch between Grangeville and the top of Whitebird Hill, but just generally gusty winds along the Camas Prairie and, and down in central Idaho. So um, the other, uh, the other period. So the other concern is for possible blizzard conditions on Monday. Um, and there's been a lot of uncertainty with this. This is going to be driven by an, an Arctic air mass system coming in. There's been a lot of uncertainty with how far and exactly what timing this is going to come in. So what we've outlined in purple here are the areas where we actually have the greatest confidence. So the, the purple areas, so basically this, um, you know, this Eureka, Whitefish, Kalispell down to Big Fork, Swan Lake, that area, uh, we're confident it's going to be pretty bad. Um, and the, the timing of this is such that it's going to be really bad for the Monday morning commute. Um, looking back uh, historically, probably the best analog that we can find for similar conditions would have been January 28, 2008. 
and this is the most similar event that we have to Sunday and Monday. Um, blizzard conditions were reported during that event from Kalispell to Glacier National Park. Gusts to 35 miles an hour in the Flathead Valley with single digit temperatures. So that's going to bring quite a wind chill with it, a dangerous wind chill. Um, also, uh, the Arctic air didn't make it very far west in that case, i.e. to central Idaho. We will see some colder temperatures in Idaho, but we're not expecting that extreme cold Arctic to make it there. And along the Continental Divide, naturally, is where we're going to have the worst conditions. So we're expecting wind chills there about negative 40 degrees. All that being said, in comparing these two events, um, what we're seeing right now for potential cold air is actually colder than this 2008 event was. So snow around two coming in on Sunday. Um, you can see the, the storm total snow. This is a 24 hour period um, from 5 a.m. through 5 uh, a.m. Sunday and in, in, into Monday. The, um, we still have a lot of snow, so we're looking at another foot during that time period coming down in, in the mountains in Idaho. Um, and then even down at Riggins, we've got potential for six to eight inches. That's a really high number for Riggins. Um, we did go back and search through the climatology. There is precedent for some of these. Uh, some of the biggest ones occurred around 1905 and the early 1900s, but we've had you know more recent snow events there where we, we got a few inches of snow. And I know that area isn't, I don't wanna say it's, well, it's not very well adapted with some of that steep terrain and uh, how infrequently the snow comes there. Our confidence is pretty low on those snow mounts down there, but I'll tell you what, the way things line up, that's just, you don't get any better potential than what we're seeing right now. As we head farther to the Northwest, you know, looking at eight to 12 inches in Kalispell and Libby and Northwest Montana in general, um, that might be a little bit on the high side of the snow, but it's much more likely that we'll actually see those snow mounts up there. Um, and then again, I'd like to show, this is for Kalispell, this timing graph. And it just shows, you know, we're gonna have a lot of snow, pretty continuous through about Monday morning, but we're expecting that main punch with the heaviest, the worst snow to occur Sunday night. And this, on this graph right here, you see we've got the, the 5.1 inches that, that occurs after 5 p.m. on Sunday. And then we've got the 1.8 that occurs after 11 p.m. on Sunday. These two have been bouncing back and forth. So I'm not sure where, you know, which one of those time periods is gonna have the worst snow, but the, the point is it's going to happen overnight before Monday morning. So it's going to be a nighttime event. So this next graphic that um, should be loading up for you is the wind gusts Monday morning. We just don't have an Arctic come through without getting some kind of winds. Um, and right now what we're looking at is Columbia Falls and you know Whitefish 30, 40 mile an hour wind gusts. We will probably see um, higher wind gusts initially with the cold air when it comes through, but I expect wind gusts in the 30s to 40s to last for um, a few hours at least. So with these wind gusts and all the snow that we're looking at, I expect some of those wind gusts to actually occur after we've had the bulk of our snowfall. So we're looking at these wind gusts right here. These are um, about 5 a.m. So this is the kind of wind we expect when people are heading out to the school bus, when people are heading to work, it's gonna be blowing, drifting snow. Um, this is when we expect to have the potential for blizzard conditions. You know, blizzard, for, for a meteorologist, that means, you know, quarter mile visibility and, and strong winds and snow. But I, I think practically, even if it doesn't meet that technical criteria of blizzard, we're gonna have blowing snow and just dangerous travel conditions for a pretty large area out there on Monday morning. So I, I would say, you know, that Kalispell, Big Fork, um, Whitefish, Columbia Falls, and then even up into the Northern Swan Valley and some of those places to the east of Big Fork, um, you know, the, the wind can really come howling through there. And even if we don't realize wind gusts these high, this high, with the amount of snow that we have falling, it's going to be pretty tough. I mean, it doesn't take much wind to blow, um, to blow the snow around. So even if we end up with 20 to 30 mile an hour winds, which we're not expecting, we're expecting them to be stronger. But even if they do come in that much weaker, we're still going to have enough snow that it's it's going to be dangerous and very difficult to travel uh, on Monday morning. All right, this uh, this takes a little explanation. So again, with the uncertainty, the, the main uncertainty we've been struggling with this is the timing, um, Sunday night and Monday, of when the cold air and how far that Arctic front is going to reach um, into uh, into western Montana. So we're we're pretty confident right now that it's not going to reach Missoula on Monday. But uh, we've got several different models that we're looking at, and I've got three areas here outlined. And right along that Arctic front, we're going to expect um, 
we're going to expect some very heavy snow. And the model is very on where that zone is. So these are just three possible scenarios for where that heavy snow is going to line up. Um, and again, you know, that, that matches up. This may, these are the areas where we'll probably see exactly what we had in that storm total snow grid or maybe even a little bit more. Not sure yet where that's going to show up. Hopefully we're able to, to hone in on that a little bit better tomorrow and Sunday and we'll, you know, we'll keep the messaging going to let you know where that looks like it might be. But somewhere in there is going to have some very, he uh, very heavy snow and um, have much more difficult conditions. But really, the, I guess the good news for some folks is that we can sort of limit that area of uncertainty up to northwest Montana. Um, if you're in northwest Montana, then, you know, please stay tuned to find out where that heavier snow is going to come in. All right. Changing gears to sort of the, the post cold front, really cold air that's coming in. This is a, a plot of current conditions. Um, and actually, if you can see my highlighter, I'm down here circling Kalispell right now which is in the bottom center of your screen. So the, the more blue and purple the colors, the colder the air. And looking upstream in, in places like northern Canada and Alaska, we can see that uh, Mayo Airport in Fort Yukon, negative 54 degrees this morning. Northway, Alaska, negative 51. This is the cold air that's about to get unleashed on us. Now, the good news is that core of cold air at negative 54 degrees isn't going to make it to western Montana. Um, that's going to probably slide down east of the divide. But that's the cold air mass that's really driving this weather system. And that's much colder than, than we anybody here can remember seeing in a very long time. Um, so that, that gives us confidence that this is coming. You know, we can really see the, the way everything's set up. Um, and it, it gives me a little bit of pause to worry that maybe we haven't gone cold enough, especially in northwest Montana with some of our forecast temperatures. There's a lot of variables that will affect that, including cloud cover and wind. Um, but just know that there's, there's a potential for some really extreme cold. And when, this isn't something we're seeing from a, a weather model. This is something that we can actually see upstream coming our way. So with that, um, on the right, I've got a seven-day temperature forecast for Kalispell to kind of be representative of what kind of change we're expecting in northwest Montana. So you can see we're going to go from above freezing on Saturday, near freezing to above freezing. That blue band in the middle is actually our range of normal temperatures. So we're going to go from above normal and we're going to um, plummet down, you know, 30 degrees or more by Tuesday where we're going to be in the single digits. And, and possibly if um, this, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame in there, someday we might actually see highs below zero. That's where some of that uh, lower confidence comes in. So, you know, I, I can't say that I'm really confident on what the temperature is going to be. Maybe it's six above Wednesday, maybe it's six below. That's kind of a wide range, but it's still... It's really cold and it's going to be a shock to the system, especially as mild as a, um, especially as mild of a winter as we've had so far. On the left, this is uh, Wednesday afternoon forecast temperature highs. For a lot of the area right now, we're expecting this to be the coldest day. So you can see that, you know, we're looking at single digits above and below zero in northwest Montana, teens through west central Montana and into the southwest Montana. But we're even looking at, even looking at very much below normal temperatures in central Idaho with highs in the 20s. So again, central Idaho will be spared some of the, I guess the, the core or the brunt of that Arctic air, but it's still gonna be quite cold with some of that leaking down to the, through the north and getting into that area. All right, up next, uh, six to 10 day outlook. Looking beyond, um, it, it looks like we're gonna have a, above average precipitation or above normal precipitation, chances are greater for that. So we continue with this snowy pattern. Um, you know, we are going to catch some breaks here and there in terms of like a day, but overall it's just not going to stop snowing for a while, it looks like. And then for temperatures, it's pretty rare to, to see a six to 10 day temperature outlook with greater than 80% confidence. And up there along our, on the Canadian border in places like Yak and Troy and Eureka and Marias Pass and places like that, uh, you know, greater than 90% chance it's just going to be cold. All that cold air that's been locked up in Alaska and Canada, it's gonna take it some time to get down here. And then once it gets here, it's gonna get trapped in the valleys and it's gonna be really hard to get rid of it. So we're looking at an extended, um, you know, we're looking at a long period. How do I put this? We're looking at a very sudden change from above normal to below normal, very much below normal conditions that are gonna last for an extended period uh, of time. So that's, that's all we've got for the briefing. I'm going to go ahead and unmute it now, and we can go ahead and start answering questions. Hi, this is uh, Ed O'Brien at Montana.
Montana Public Radio. I guess my question would deal with um, avalanche risk here. We've had a terrible couple of weeks with um, rough snow conditions out there. Any advice for folks who want to take advantage of all the snow? All right, so for those of you who might not have heard him, that's uh, that's Ed O'Brien, and he's asking about avalanche impacts and risks with this storm. We've got um, our avalanche focal point here, Leanne, so I'll let her answer that. Um, I hesitate to answer about avalanche risk because I would defer to all of our local avalanche centers for the best information on that, but what I can tell you is that um, there is improving snow structures out there in some parts of our forecast area. However, with the amount of moisture that's coming in, the, the water equivalent in the snow that we're seeing, and then of course the winds, the backcountry conditions are gonna degrade and degrade quickly. So anytime that there's a sudden change, you know, with temperatures, snow levels, uh, precip precipitation like we're seeing, the, the backcountry responds in, in a negative manner. So I, I would say that the risk would rise, but again, I would, I would caution everyone to, to go to their local avalanche center and, and see their forecast. They will have the best information. Thanks, Leah. You're welcome. Is there anybody else out there who has any questions? Uh, any? Ryan or Leah, this is Ed again from Montana Public Radio. I'm just curious, we do have listeners, Great Fall buildings and things like that. That's not your area, but uh, if you could summarize very briefly, is it gonna be cold, snowy over there as well? Um, so the, the question was um, for some of the areas to the east of us, like uh, Great Falls and Billings, what kind of weather impacts are we going to have over there? Um, to answer that, yeah, it's going to be really cold. In fact, um, if, you, if you go into northeast Montana, like Glasgow and places like that, they're going to take the brunt of that cold air. That stuff's going to come down east of the divide, and I'm not sure when the, the coldest core is going to come down. It's not going to come down initially. That, the first wave is kind of just that. It's just the first wave. And then it's going to be, um, you know, there's going to be, it looks right now like there's going to be another reinforcing shot of cold air late next week. And that will probably be the, the coldest for them. Um, and it's hard to see, you know, hard to say what's going to happen after that. But it's going to be, it's going to go through there and cause uh, a lot of problems. I'm not sure whether Great Falls or Billings are talking about blizzards at this point. But the cold that's coming through is going to be pretty extreme for them. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, thanks. This is Jason in Great Falls. We haven't, um, as far as the blizzard concern goes, uh, we haven't quite assessed that quite yet, but it does look like, um, you know, probably sometime early next week, it could be a blowing snow threat. And then, uh, and then good job on the cold. We're expecting probably the coldest day is Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, it really, the Arctic air mass is going to be pretty cold, but it, it'll also depend on how much snow we get out of it. And, but, 20 widespread 20 to 30 below especially along the high line there is what we're kind of pretty confident on right now jason what's your i'm sorry what's your last name and you're with the uh, national weather service in great falls yeah oh sorry yeah, this is jason england i'm just a near i'm a near object here at the national weather service in great falls and how do you spell your last name please uh england england is um a-n-g-l-i-n thank you very much yeah thank you so Ryan or Leanne, here in Missoula, what I saw on that map, if I saw this correctly, three, up to three to five inches by Monday, possibly, huh? Yeah, actually, that, that's about what we're looking at. Um, the Again, the the we're kind of on the south edge of where we're expecting that, that Arctic to reach um, with that, so a little bit more uncertainty on the snow amounts, but yeah, we're looking at a couple inches, I think, and um, yeah. All right, uh, do we have any more questions? Um, real quick, would you mind, uh, at the fly, we put uh, the Missoulian, would you mind just uh, spelling your name and uh, giving me your first title? Uh, yes, my name is Ryan Leach, um, R-Y-A-N-L-E-A-C-H, and I'm a meteorologist with the Weather Service in Missoula. Okay, thank you. And we have Leanne here who was talking about the avalanches earlier. <laughs> is that rude? If you need my name, it's L-E-E-A-N-N. All right, I just kind of like to wrap it up then. Um, if you do have more questions and you're kind of shy, uh, you can give us a call directly and talk one-on-one. -on -one. The phone number should be up on the screen right now. Uh, and I, I'd just like to reiterate that this is going to be a pretty dangerous situation for people to be outside up in northwest, Mont uh, in northwest Montana with the wind chills and the snow and stuff. So um, you know, we're, we're really concerned about it, and that's kind of why we had this, um, this webinar, just with the, 
the large snow amounts in the mountains in Idaho and the wind down there tonight, and then again, a potential blizzard up in the northwest. So stay tuned. Thanks. We're done here in Missoula.